Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Pearl Fontaine. Coming up, a new school library now operational at the Roseau Primary School. Grand Bray produces yet another centenarian in less than two months and details on the progress of the Salaberry Resource Center coming up right after this. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. Welcome back. Government's construction of the Salaberry Resource Center progresses in an effort to enhance learning development and communication for individuals in the Kalanago Territory. Work commenced in September 2013 and is scheduled to conclude at the end of a 14-month contract. The Resource Center will consist of a post office, preschool and auditorium. Project foreman Jonah Thomas, speaking to GIS News on Wednesday, provides insight on the progress of the resource center thus far. So basically, right now, we we'll just start the block work on the floor, which is basically one level building. So we're basically now doing the, <coughs> the block work on that level. Parliamentary representative for the Kalanago Territory, Honorable Ashton Grano, notes the challenges that deterred advancement of the resource center and government's effort to provide a resolution. We did have some difficulty at the beginning uh, because we had to relocate a gentleman who was sitting right here and it, it took us some time before we succeeded in getting him out. We, we had to compensate him for his home, we had to do an assessment of the house and then compensate him. And even after the compensation was done, he, he had some other concerns. So it took us some time before we could actually relocate him. We succeeded finally in relocating him. And he, he's living in a better condition now. His house is not complete, but he's, he's doing, uh, you know, a, a, a better housing. Um, so his, his housing is improved. According to Honorable Grano, the overall cost of the resource center is $1.2 million. He detailed the benefits of the project to the residents of the Kalinago Territory. The preschoolers, for example, um, the people in culture, Karifuna, Karina, they would have, a, they, they would have an area to come and, 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 and perform. Uh, you, you have the post office, people won't have far to go anymore to post their letters and receive letters. And, and all the other things that go with it. Of course, we, we might be able to provide some, some other services outside of, of, of what was perceived. The parliamentary representative applauds the work of government for its initiative towards providing better living conditions for the Kalanago people and expresses his gratitude to the residents of the area for their patience and understanding. This institution will provide great opportunities for residents to easily accomplish various aspects of their daily lives and contribute to the preservation of Dominican culture. In more news, curious and avid readers at the Roseau Primary School now have the services of a brand new school library. On Wednesday, the school was presented with a well-stocked library and learning center thanks to Hands Across the Sea and Western Union. Hands Across the Sea, an international literacy organization co-founded by husband and wife Harriet and Tom Linsky, has been supporting literacy programs at primary and secondary schools in Dominica and the wider Caribbean over the past six years. Wednesday's presentation was one of three such donations to the schools, this year valued at $10,000 US dollars. And so pleased that uh, we've been able to partner with the um, Western Union Foundation, uh, Witch Church, the generous Aird family um, to uh, get this fabulous $10,000 U.S. grant from the Western Union Foundation to uh, refurbish this library, the library at Castle Bruce Secondary School, and the newly established library at St. John's Academy up in Portsmouth. Manager of Western Union in Dominica, Kira Thompson Aird, says her organization is delighted to partner in this important educational project. When Harriet and Tom came to meet with Jason Aird, one of the directors of the company, and he brought it to our attention over at the Western Union side of the business, we were a little hesitant because we didn't know if we had $5,000 US to come up with 
We searched, we found it. We made an application to the Western Union Foundation and one of their pillars for 2013 was education. We were over the moon when our application was accepted and the grant was given. By that I mean for every dollar that we as an agent of Western Union contribute to Harriet and Tom at Hands Across the Sea, the Western Union Foundation matches it dollar for dollar. So we contributed 5,000 US towards Hands Across the Sea. Western Union Foundation matched that with 5,000 US. The Caribbean representative of Western Union was also on hand to share in the occasion. It really brings me great joy to be here today to be able to donate um, along with Hands Across the Sea um, and our agent, HHV Whitchurch, to be able to really give back to the community. We recognize that you know, the future is important and for our society, for our children in the Caribbean, to make sure they have the things that they need in order to succeed. School principal of the Rozo Primary, Greta Roberts, expressed thanks to both organizations for making the library possible. She spoke about the benefits of a functional library at her school. As educators and learners, we understand the importance of reading as a lifelong journey, knowing full well that it does not start or stop within our school walls. A library, therefore, provides that avenue where our children are exposed to the joys of reading, especially those who do not have reading role models at home. The importance of reading at the Rozo Primary School is being taken very seriously by students and teachers. The school, through a special literacy program, has been able to equip children to read above their grade level, an accomplishment which the school principal is proud of. This gift is even more widely appreciated as through a reading program undertaken by our teachers and sponsored by the National Cooperative Credit Union that over 90% of our students were able to move from reading below their grade levels to reading at and above grade levels. A remarkable performance. Felicia Philogen, a student of the Rozo Primary, is excited about the benefits that her school library will bring. She, along with her other schoolmates, expressed their gratitude. Here in this library, these books will take us on adventures, open our intellect and give birth to new ideas. We give thanks for such a wonderful, exquisite gift. Thank you. We are children, children of the light. Are the schools benefiting from the generosity of hands across the sea through this project is the Castle Bruce Secondary and the St. John's Academy. Principals of both schools are elated about the prospects. When hands across the sea came, everything changed for our books and our library. They started assisting us with new books and now we are in the process of renovating this co-house. We have windows up. We have our aircon up, and this room is going to be the most beautiful, exciting room at Cassie Secondary. We hope to put our library on wheels and wheel it into a classroom every evening and wheel it out into a big corridor that we have every day. So we will have structures like this where we'll, where we'll be able to have our books permanent and move them back and forth. We'll be happy to say that we might, we'll be able to have our books, our library, named after Hands Across the Sea and We Church Western Union, because you are the ones who are bringing that to us for the first time. To date, Hands Across the Sea has donated over 34,000 books to 53 schools in Dominica. This is in keeping with its mission of improving literacy within the confines of school libraries. The 20th annual Vosch Mission entered its last day on Thursday morning at the Goodwill Parish Hall. 
Vosh Voluntary Optometric Services to Humanity in collaboration with the Rotary Club of Dominica has been providing eye care services and glasses for the less fortunate among us. This year in particular marks 20 years of this service to Dominica. We now join Jonna Hector for this report. When the GIS news team arrived at the Goodwill Parish Hall this morning, the Vosh team and a team of Rotarians were already poised to begin the day's work. At 8 in the morning, already crowds of people were waiting outside the premises. At the entrance to the parish hall, a team sat readily available to jot down the necessary information about a patient's eye history. Blood pressure tests were also taken. Then the all too popular eye test. This was followed by an eye examination by one of the Vosch team doctors. A well-equipped team had a striking arrangement of medical tools so as to be prepared for every pair of eyes on the premises. I'd like to look right straight ahead. When you look up there, is it better when I do this? Or is it better when I take it away? This is better? Yeah. A friendly group of Vosch members were just ecstatic to be of service. After an extensive eye examination, those who required reading glasses were then fitted and tested. For GIS News, I'm Jan Hector. The mission began on Monday, January 13 in Portsmouth. The team then worked their way across to Marigot and then to St. Joseph and Grand Bay. In Goodwill alone, doctors anticipated well over 100 patients. Volunteer Optometry Services for Humanity, VOSH, is a non-governmental, non-sectarian, apolitical organization dedicated to the provision of eye and vision care services, especially for those who are below the poverty level and without access to local eye care. It is estimated that 1,800 to 2,000 people are treated every year when the mission visits Dominica. For the last 20 years, a group of professionals from across the U.S. travel to Dominica to volunteer their services. In more news, Joseph Merrifield of Grand Bay has been added to the growing list of centenarians now living in Dominica. A church service to celebrate this milestone was held at the Old Fort in Lale on Wednesday. Merrifield, who was decked out in his checkered shirt, gold tie and green blazer, stood out among the several family members, friends, government representatives and well-wishers who came to celebrate with him. Joseph Merrifield is described as being full of energy and we understand he is still able to walk to church on Sundays. He has five children and several grand and great grand children. Parish priest for the Grand Bay community, Monsignor William John Lewis, who led the special service, described Merrifield as a gift to the community who has remained true to good Christian principles. And what a gift he has been to the community. What a gift he has been to all of us. Look at his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren. And what a name he has here in this community. A name as a community person, but also as a faithful Christian, as a faithful Catholic, to the end. Mr. Merrifield, thank you. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for hearing God calling you and saying yes. And thank you for showing us what it is to be strong in one's faith and never giving up. Four centenarians have emerged from Grand Bay in less than two months. President of the Dominica Council on Aging, Zetma Toussaint, was happy to welcome yet another centenarian from the Grand Bay community over the last 10 years. Grand Bay seems to possess a special secret when it comes to longevity, for this is the ninth person confirmed as centenarian as our records show over the period 2003 to the present. Mr. Merrifield, today you have joined a group of elite and distinguished Dominicans 
in Grand Bay, we recently celebrated the 100th birthday of Marie Angle Dominique and Mrs. Marie Laura. So you, Mr. Merrifield, have two days, one on your right and one on your left, with you in the center. How lucky are you? You must be feeling like a king. Parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Justina Charles, thanked centenarian Merrifield for his contribution to the village of Grand Bay. Let me say to Mr. Merrifield that we want to congratulate you. I want to say to you that we are happy to be here with you today. You have brought us out and you have said in your life, you have spoken to us many words by the life that you lived. And I think that all of us should look at you and try to take at least one little page from your book. I think there are so many things for us to learn. You have lived a life that some of us should want to emulate. And it helped me to think back of the theme for Carnival, New Cornet Vive. And I said, I sat there and I'm saying, you know, Mr. Merrifield, Cornet Vive. He lived life, he enjoyed it, and I think he did what was necessary to have carried him through for 100 years. Social Services Minister Honorable Gloria Schillingford also congratulated Mr. Merrifield on his attainment of the ripe old age of 100. The minister hinted to some of the living practices of Grand Bay residents, which apparently contributes to their record levels of longevity. You have done well, you have run the race well. And you, I, I sat this morning and started considering, but what is Grand Bay doing? I know that you love your ground provision. You have your goats. I don't know, maybe you have some pigs. I know you do vegetables. And so you live well out of the land that God has given to you. And so I am sure that it's, those are some of the things which have helped Mr. Merrifield to live for a hundred years. President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Savre, on behalf of his office, presented Mr. Merrifield with a congratulatory gift card and gift basket. Honorable Gloria Schillingford, on behalf of her ministry, also presented the new centenarian with a gift basket. The government of Dominica, in its continued commitment to caring for the country's elderly, will contribute $500 to the family of Joseph Merrifield, which will go towards his care. Mr. Merrifield will also receive a cylinder of LPG gas at no cost to him. Joseph Merrifield is the sixth man among the 27 centenarians currently resident on the island. The relentless quest for the tourism industry in Dominica is to obtain 90,000 stayover visitors by the year 2015. As tourism is indeed everybody's business, the aid bank is playing its part to ensure that the hotel industry in Dominica is ready to assist in achieving this milestone. On Thursday, the aid bank, in collaboration with the Caribbean Technology Consultancy Services, which is the technical arm of the Caribbean Development Bank, held an opening ceremony to begin a five-day workshop on marketing techniques for small hotels. Several owners and staff of small hotels, as well as other tourism stakeholders, were invited to attend this workshop. The main objective of the workshop is to equip small hoteliers with marketing skills that will enable them to improve productivity by enhancing the quality of the service they provide and by increasing their visibility in the market. In his remarks at the opening ceremony, General Manager of the Aid Bank, Julius Corbett, said he believes that this workshop is timely as tourism is a major contributor to the local economy. Corbett indicated the bank's readiness to assist small hotels face challenges. Tourism is a major economic sector for growth in Dominica. Tourism is big. I think last time I looked at it, the, the, G, the, the contribution to GTB, uh, GDP for tourism is pretty high. So it is big. But we are also aware that there are challenges for low occupancy in the business. Therefore, the National Workshop on Marketing Techniques for Small Hotels is very timely and designed to enhance, enhance the marketing skills of managers and staff for properties in a way that will maximize earnings and profits. He reaffirmed the commitment of his institution in developing small businesses in the tourism sector. It bank's mandate 
is to promote and influence economic development in Dominica and to mobilize funds for the purpose of such development, complemented by a profound interest in wanting the management staff of our tourism properties to be well-rounded, excellent entrepreneurs with successful growing business. Minister for Tourism, Honorable Ian Douglas, reminded those present of the Tourism Ministry's mandate to attract 90,000 stayover visitors by 2015. But the minister spoke passionately about the importance of tourism as an industry that should be everybody's business as the tourism dollar filters through almost every sector of the economy. He stated the new marketing skills acquired through this workshop should help small hoteliers embark on new marketing initiatives to ensure that their businesses remain relevant in an expanding competitive market. Honorable Douglas emphasized that the positive impact of tourism on the economy should be a motivating factor to protect the industry and promote its growth. Because it is our business, we should protect it, but more importantly, we should assist it to grow and to develop. In that regard, Dominica is now embarking on a tourism satellite account system that will give us a better understanding and a better insight into the true contribution of the tourism industry to the GDP. Nikki Maroye, John Baptist, marketing manager of Discover Dominica Authority, will be the main facilitator of the workshop. She gave an overview of the areas expected to be targeted. The chaining is intended to be real, is intended to make marketing real. Marketing at times has uh, a lot of terminology that may be difficult to understand, buzzwords, uh, so to say, but we intend to make it real. And uh, we'll be covering four different modules, including what is marketing, looking at the perceptions, the definitions of marketing, the marketing exchange, marketing strategies. We'll be looking at how to achieve results. Why is marketing important? Of course, for all of us in the industry, we understand that if it doesn't affect our bottom line positively, it's not important to us. So that's the first thing we will look at. Uh, brand recognition and awareness. Um, attracting the right players and players not in terms, not only in terms of the customers, but also your internal staff because all of those players are um, impacted and can assist in impacting your marketing initiatives. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Macfist in St. Louis for the Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moi, c'est Macfist in St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique a conduit le programme d'innovation Kain en Capucin. Par rapport à cela, sorti hors de mon parlement, on a eu le régime de l'Austrie. Les nous tenus fait en Capucin, en fait, en France, en Capucin, en Capucin. Premier ministre um, Roosevelt Skerritt a attendu une um, 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 cérémonie ça là. Et nous avons fait un en village là qui a gardé quand ça fait Kai. Et nous vivons dans un village là et nous avons fait un village là. Nous avons fait des conditions de la vie. Nous avons fait des familles comme ça. Nous avons fait des conditions de la vie. Nous avons fait des pièces là. Le Premier ministre um, 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 Skerritt a décidé de faire tout l'argent. Mais tout bon l'argent à six côtés pour nous arranger. Um, 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 kaya se moun sala. Et mon kapale kont um, octobre, novembre, décembre. Pour à présent, trois mois, nous déjà bâti, nous déjà fini deux cases entières et nous nous deux les autres en bas construction pour faire quatre et nous nous six stot pour nous faire. Et ça nous a fait, nous a, nous a mangé ce cas là. Ce cas là était tellement mauvais pour croiser ce cas là entier, nous croisons entier, il avait fait cas neuf, il y a eu plus de washroom, plus de bathroom, plus de toilet facilities. Et nous avons dit, si vous avez fait ça, 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 qui a coûté presque 300 000, 400 000 Nous avons fini avec le projet là. Mais nous avons fini ça. Nous avons dit 10 familles qui sont plus confortables um, en Casio. Et ça qui a affecté si chaque famille, l'année, en nous de 5 mois, 50, avant 50 personnes qui bénéficient de ce projet là. Dans la nouvelle, le cabinet Dominique a un process garder toute possibilité, option, 
Pour adresser ces affaires au la mauvaise la mer qui a affecté Chimé, tout puis en Marigotte. Ministre agriculteur, Honorable Matthew Walter, a adressé Bagay Salan pendant qu'il était joint et puis habitant Nord-Est, plus bonne semaine Salan. Ministre Walter dit que le cabinet a déjà discuté la situation Salan et puis une solution qu'il a expecté tout de suite. Honorable Walter a aussi fait par Wall pour ces habitants là que le gouvernement a mis en place pour réhabiliter réhabilitation 14 feet of roads en Wassalam qui a servi l'argent European Union. Honorable Walter a fait par Wall qui est le projet Salam qui a commencé le premier cas l'année 2014. Le gouvernement Dominique a tapé 54 millions de dollars en bas du programme BAM pour le développement agricole en Dominique. Finalement, le ministre de l'Agriculture a mis autant d'attention à ce développement qu'il a fait en Dominique. Par Wall Sela, sorti en directeur de l'Agriculture, Ricky Brumand. Nous avons apprécié pour le gouvernement de Venezuela pour le café. Nous avons bâti un plan de Nous avons fait une fondation de l'argent à terre. Équipement pour le plan de l'argent là en Guantanamo. Um, ça nous est pour finir ces cases-là pour mettre l'équipement là-dedans. Nous avons travaillé à ces stations agricoles pour produire des plans pour les habitants. Uh, et bien, nous avons un programme pour ça, pour faire un certain nous, nous planter la vallée uh, 300, 300, 300 um, à café en uh, 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 trois années qui viennent. Messieurs, mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole. Pour à présent, non moins c'est Macfus et c'est Luz. Au revoir. Find out next in the tip of the day ways to care for your eyes. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Eyes have been described as the windows of the soul. Practically speaking, our eyes are the windows through which we view the world around us. Given the important function our eyes perform for us, it would seem to follow that we'd give them the best care possible. But sometimes we get too busy or we forget to do a few simple things that can keep our eyes healthy. Protecting your eyes is the first part of taking care of them. Make sure they do not get injured in the first place. To keep our eyes working at their best, we need to give them a little attention. Vitamin A is essential to healthy eyes and normal eyesight, and carrots are known to be high in vitamin A. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you can visit our website at news.gov.dm. From all of us here at GIS, thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.